Nandini looked at the ocean. The boat in which Palyavatarayar had boarded was approaching Parthapendra's ship. Nandini sighed. It hit Parthapendra's chest like a storm. Goddess! Tell me! Tell me what I should do! There is no need to separate what is good for them and what is good for me. What is good for them is good for me!" said the Pallava hero. All the strange thoughts came to his mind at that time. There is no doubt that this girl is suffering like a caged parrot in the hands of that horrible old man. Why not free her from that wild cat? Let her express her will. He can be imprisoned on that ship and taken away to an unmonitored country. Sandalwood! How did he dare to marry such a young girl who was a daughter and a granddaughter? Nandini was still looking at the boat and the ship. From the boat she saw Palyavatarayar getting on board. Good luck! He's on board safely. Ain't he old, brave as he is? I was worried about stumbling from the boat to the ship. She said. Palava is disappointed. Why is she so kind to the old man? What if he falls off the boat and dies? Glory to the country, she is also free. Why is she so compassionate? It was only today that I came to know how much the old man was admired by the Chola clan. How did he run away when the prince was in danger? Sir! The prince might have escaped and survived? Surely he must have died! said Nandini. Certainly not, but it is impossible that he who jumped overboard in such a whirlwind should survive. What can we do with the course of fate? Paul Avans said. This is not due to destiny, it is due to the greed of that old Rakshasi. Do you know, sir? Kundave Devi had great faith in astrology and astrology. She looked at her brother's horoscope and palm print and believed that he would become the emperor of the three worlds. Alas! Alas! This is the fate of that beautiful brother. How much will she suffer when she finds out what has happened? I feel like I have to comfort her too. Saying this, Nandini's voice was full of joy. Paul Avon was surprised for a moment. Then he decided that it was his ears that were wrong. Why should the queen be comforted? Is this a disaster caused by her greed? She should suffer for it. How is that, sir? There are a thousand and ten thousand people in the Chola country who would tremble at a drop of tears in her eyes. She is the wealthiest daughter of the emperor and the most beautiful in the three worlds. I once thought so too. I mean, before seeing themselves. What do you think after seeing me? The beauty of Kundave Devi is not equal to the beauty of their little toe. That's what you'll say now. If you see her tomorrow, you'll forget that I'm alone in this world. I will not for a day. Goddess! Are you telling me to test me? Tell me now what their command is. I do not have the power to command. Sir! I make a request. Some are slandering that there has been division and confusion in the Chola country after my marriage to the great Palyavatarayar. I wish to prove it false. That is why I seek your help. Parthapendra was a little disappointed. Nandini had thought that he would throw himself into something difficult for her. He was eager to fulfill that and please her. But she says something about the kingdom thing. Say it queen. Say whatever they want. He said. Sir. It was the younger Prati who prevented peace in Chola. Her arrogance angered the Chola princes and officials. She wanted her brother Aromas Hivarman to somehow be installed on the throne of Chola. She prevented reconciliation. Now that reason is gone. It is easy to compromise from now on. Dot listen, sir. You have said so. The ministers and other high officials want Madhurand Hagar to be crowned after Sundara Chola. The emperor has agreed to it. Really, goddess? Yes, sir. Otherwise, would he have ordered the prince to be imprisoned? But that is not right, in my opinion. There is room for a compromise. Shall we divide the kingdom north of the river to Adidakari Kalar, and the south to Madhurand Hagar? Were not their ancestors, the Pallava Mahachakaravardas, content with ruling the Thantai Mandal? 
weren't the native Chola kings content with a kingdom between the two rivers? Devi, why are you telling me all this? What will happen to me if any kingdom goes away? Who will rule which kingdom? What will happen to me? Sir. I thought you were true loyal friends of Aditha Kari Kalar. It was only recently that I knew why I was born. Listen. The sound of the ocean waves echoes the voice of my soul saying yes yes. All the birds living in the forest are shouting okay, okay. Goddess. Don't tell me about stake the Chola Empire. Say something else. Ask them to bring priceless corals from a coral island across the seas. Ask them to fetch pearls from the bottom of the deep sea. Climb to the highest peak of Merumela and ask him to fetch the panacea herb. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. The sound of the ocean waves echoes the voice of my soul saying yes yes. All the birds living in the forest are shouting okay, okay. Goddess. Don't tell me about stake the Chola Empire. Say something else. Ask them to bring priceless corals from a coral island across the seas. Ask them to fetch pearls from the bottom of the deep sea. Climb to the highest peak of Merumela and ask him to fetch the panacea herb. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. The sound of the ocean waves echoes the voice of my soul saying yes yes. All the birds living in the forest are shouting okay, okay. Goddess. Don't tell me about stake the Chola Empire. Say something else. Ask them to bring priceless corals from a coral island across the seas. Ask them to fetch pearls from the bottom of the deep sea. Climb to the highest peak of Merumela and ask him to fetch the panacea herb. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. Don't tell me about stake the Chola Empire. Say something else. Ask them to bring priceless corals from a coral island across the seas. Ask them to fetch pearls from the bottom of the deep sea. Climb to the highest peak of Merumela and ask him to fetch the panacea herb. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. Don't tell me about stake the Chola Empire. Say something else. Ask them to bring priceless corals from a coral island across the seas. Ask them to fetch pearls from the bottom of the deep sea. Climb to the highest peak of Merumela and ask him to fetch the panacea herb. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. Ask them to fly above the clouds and pluck the stars, touch the radius and put them around their necks. Ask them to bring the full moon and make it a mirror for their faces. Enough, sir, enough. That old brat is already calling me crazy. Don't make me mad, really. Said Nandini. Parthipendra felt a little embarrassed. I'm the one who's mad, excuse me. Make your wish known first. He said. I want to get rid of the bad name I have in the Chola country, in Tamil Nadu, and that is why I am seeking your help. People are saying that the Chola clan has been harmed because of my marriage to this old man. They are saying that I am the one who made Madhurand Hakativar desire the kingdom. They are also saying that I am the one who turned the Chola princess to his side. Dot I don't want to die with this infamy. Why are you talking about dying? To torment me. Palava Kumara. Do you know Raya Shastra? Do you believe in Raya Shastra? Nandini asked an unrelated question. Parthipendra did not answer directly, where? Show me your hand. He said. Nandini extended her right hand. Parthipendra stared at it for a while and said, Amazing lines. Such a rare sight. Show me that hand too. 
said. Nandini extended her other hand as well. Paul Avon saw that too and said, Devi. Has anyone seen the wonderful lines of their hands and said anything before? He asked. Yes. The younger brat of old took one look at my hand and said. What did she say? She said I would die in Albayol. That is truth. Said Parthipendra. Sir. Do you say so? But it seems that she is half literate in Shastra. It is true that one of these fingerprints refers to Apiola, but another line says that there will be rebirth after crossing that continent. After that rebirth, it says that she will have the privilege of traveling to many countries across the ocean and will have a long life of bliss that the Manatee kings did not have. The lines are so clear that the true love of a young man who meets so casually on the beach will sacrifice his life to fulfill their little wish. Saying this, Parthipendra suddenly grabbed Nandini's open arms and looked into his eyes. Nandini threw her hands free and said, Chi-Chi. What have you done? She said. Excuse me. I forgot these were their hands. I thought they were two centimeri flowers, he said. Had the caterpillar seen you, he would have speared you. Goddess. I worry that I have but one life to give for you. I would give that one life like this. Keep this orphan to help the girl. Tell me what to do. The Chola Empire must be saved from being ruined by a matriarchal revolt. It needs your help. How? Bring your friend Carrie Kaler to the house of Sambuvarayar of Kadampur. Sambuvarayar has a daughter. If you give her in marriage to Aditha Kari Kaler, my desire will be fulfilled. So much panic for this trivial matter? I must bring Aditha Kari Kaler to Kadampur. Then, if Sambuvarayar's daughter is married to Aditha Kari Kaler, the rebellion is half over. In the Chola Empire, if the southern half is divided for Madhurandaka and the northern half is for Kari Kaler, the rebellion is completely over. Then, my bad name will be gone. Then I will fulfill my destiny. I will fall into the middle of the sea and die. Then I will continue to come and save them. The rebirth of both of us will begin. We will cross the seas to distant lands. There I will establish a great kingdom for them. Sir. Don't talk like that. I come from the tradition of southern Tamil women. Dharma Pathanai of Palyavatarayar. Goddess. Tell me the truth. Why did you marry this old man? Was it for love? Or for his rape? Nandini sighed. Her eyes rolled upwards. Somehow, it seemed that she was lost in some old sad memories for a while. Sin. Don't blame the old man. I married him out of love. Why? Why? What did you see in him? There is nothing missing in him. I married him myself because I wanted a palace life and power. I can't believe it. I can't believe it, but it's true. Since I was a child, she used to mock me as a poor person and an orphan. She used to tell me that I don't even have the right to play with royal children. I couldn't bear that insult and I did this mistake. Goddess. Who is the female demon who insulted them like that? Don't know, can't you guess? Are the little brats squat? Yes. One day I will come to her senses. God has punished her. A beautiful brother and lover of life have gone in the same direction. I feel sorry for her now. This punishment is not enough for that hypocrite. Her punishment will be fulfilled if she helps me with the thing I asked them to do a little while ago. Her desire to be the sole heroine of the Chola Empire will be dusted with dust. Given their wish. What gift will you give? I will give you whatever you ask. I will give you whatever you ask that does not deviate from the tradition of Tamil women. A new religion has appeared in the Western countries. It has spread to Arab countries, Baghdad countries, Persia etc. According to the religious theory, married couples can separate if they want. There will be a ceremony for it. Even women can have another marriage. Yes, I've heard that too. We'll go to those countries. We'll join that religion. Sometimes I daydream like that too. But is it possible? 
Goddess. Why won't it happen? It must happen. It will happen if they only agree. I will sail with them across the ocean. I will land in distant lands. I will establish a great kingdom with the strength of this knife in my hand. I will mount them on the pure gold of Navarre. I will put on their cirrus a crown of pearls that will dazzle the eyes of the beholders. This is why I, I was born, for this reason I have remained alive in so many battlefields without dying. Sir! There is my husband coming back. The boat is nearing the shore. Calm down, we can talk about other things later. Then Windevi! Come with us to Tanjavur. Come as a prisoner if not invited as a guest. Your invitation is enough for me, said Parthipendra. The boat in which Palyavatarayar had boarded reached the shore. The old man got out of the boat and came like a ghost. Nandini and Parthipendra stood up. At the sight of Pulavatarayar, a fire broke out. Pity! The old man was angry at the thought of them sitting together and talking all that time. There is no way to publish it. Therefore, the anger in the heart flared up. Nada. Have you checked the ship well? Have you questioned the sailors well? Is everything he said true? Nandini asked in a bit of crocodile language. That voice calmed the king of Pavur a little. Yes, queen. Everything he said was true? The penitent of the Chola nation, the wealthiest son of the Chola clan, the prince of Tamil Nadu's eye, is gone. Saying that, looking back at Paul Avon, the one responsible for that is the murderous Sand Alan standing here. He roared. Sir. It's not me, don't blame me. It's the demon of Mahini who is ruling the Chola country because of the prince. Said Parthipendra. The old man's anger now overflowed the dam. She thought he was talking about Nandini. Sinister. What did you say? Saying that, he suddenly bent down and picked up the spear lying on the ground. Pointing at Parthibendra, he nodded. Nandini holds his hand and stops him. Nada. What is this? May their victory, which has killed so many enemies, be stained with the blood of this guest. She said. Queen. Ivan is a guest. Didn't you hear what Ivan said about you a while ago? said the old man. His voice was hoarse with anger and his words stuttered. Did he say about me? Listen well and find out. Then I will avenge myself with the knife in my hand. I will not trouble them. Said Nandini. Sir. What a fool am I to say such a thing about the young princess of Palyavur? Didn't I say about the devil of Mahini in the Palyare? The younger bratty gave a Russian leaf to a boy named Kuntave Van Diathavan and sent it to the prince. It was not to save that rascal and the prince jumped into the ocean without my even stopping him. So Kuntave was the cause of the prince's death. I said that, said Parthipendra. Palyavetare was a little ashamed of his hasty wit. Don't just cover it up. You are also responsible for the prince's untimely death. How did you consent to him getting off the ship in such a whirlwind? Get lost. Don't stand before my eyes. Said. Nandini interrupted, Natha. Isn't it better to take him to Tanjavur? Isn't it better for him to inform the emperor about what happened? Otherwise, those who are already waiting to blame us will add this too? They will blame us without even a hint that we drowned the prince in the sea. She said. Let me tell you. I'm not afraid of all that. I'll cut out the tongue of the one who tells it. But it's a good thing for him to come with us. Look. Why are you looking around and awake? Are you looking to escape? Saying that, he beckoned to the soldiers standing at a distance. Four people came rushing. Seize him. He ordered that. All four soldiers approached Parthipendra. He was quiet until he got closer. Then in a moment he showed his hand. The four soldiers fell on all four sides. Sir! Send no others if you are to bind me. I am ready to be bound by the hand of the great Avenger, who is a warrior and has received sixty-four wounds and thirty-six battles. I will not let others come near me. 
he said. A slight blush was seen on the face of the Reaper. He said, You are a warrior born of the heroic Pallava clan, no doubt. If you agree to come and go with us to Tanjavur, say so, there is no need to bind you. That is my wish, I want to see the Emperor in person and tell him what happened. Shouldn't my name also be in vain? said Parthipendra. Then let us depart at once, said the farmer. At that moment, an owl in the forest, which was not far from where they were, heard the sound of hooting. Nandini looked towards the sound. So the other two didn't notice the change in her face. This Kodakare forest is very strange. Here the Koda calls in broad daylight, said Parthipendra. Two more times the same owl's voice was heard. Nandini looked back and asked, Do we have to leave at once? Wouldn't it be better to watch from here one more day? Couldn't the prince come ashore holding some log? She said. Parthipendra. Have you seen Ilay Arani's wisdom? Did it not appear to us? Yes, we must be here one day, mere presence is not enough. We must station men along the coast, we must search and tell. Said the reaper. I have no objection, sir. But I have no hope that the prince will be caught any more. If you had seen the turbulence of the sea when the whirlwind blew, you would be as disappointed as I am, said Parthipendra. However, the old man did not listen. He stationed his men at a distance of an ear along the beach. He also wandered restlessly along the beach. <laughs>